This is episode 362 of The Journey, a conversation on leadership, culture, and creativity. My name is Vidal, and I want to thank you for allowing me to have this conversation with you on this beautiful Tuesday, January 7th, which is the year 2020, the new decade. And I'm still in the mindset that resolutions work. Now, some people statistically have given up by now over the things that they resolve to do for this new decade, for this new year. And I think that's a struggle that we all have. And, and the reason why I still believe that resolutions work is because for us, uh, as Christians, for us who follow Jesus, we have made Jesus, we have made God the object of our resolutions. So anytime that you see your resolution, your desire, your inclination, your determination, the things that you resolve to do based on what God has resolved to do, that's when we find God as uh, endorsing or co-signing those resolutions. So all that I'm saying is that I believe they work because as long as they align, they are under the uh, the will, under the design, under the thinking of God. I believe God takes responsibility of those resolutions. And this is why I invited you a couple of um, uh, podcasts ago to look into the book of Psalms because the book of Psalms chapter 90, which is what we at our church, I, I serve as one of the pastors Um, at First Baptist Church in FAR, uh, I get the privilege to speak the Bible on a weekly basis. And when I presented on the last Sunday of the year, two Sundays ago at our church, I spoke of Psalm 90 because I believe Psalm 90 is is part of a resolution, is part of a resolving uh, kind of a determination from this leader by the name of Moses. We believe he's the writer of Psalms. And if you go back into this previous podcast, uh, you can see how I explained. We went through the first resolution, which was basically... Uh, verse 12 where he resolves and he's teaching you know the people and said teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom this is verse 12 of that psalm 90 so what i want to do today i want to take you into the very next verse and i believe the second resolution which i believe moses presents is verse 13 which after you he describes the desire their resolution to bring a heart of wisdom versus a heart of foolishness especially as they conquer as they enter the promised land um, he basically describes and presents resolution number two in my opinion as what does wisdom look like what is that having a heart of wisdom so so my, my desire my hope my prayer when it comes to uh, at a personal level, a family level, and, and again, this is representation of family for me because I'm presenting this podcast to you, recording this podcast from home, um, is that I pray for wisdom. As I see my kids go back into school and, and, and their jobs and our marriage and the things that we got to do, what does a heart of wisdom look like? So resolution number two for me is ver- exactly verse 13. And verse 13 reads the following, relent, Lord. Relent, Lord. That's what he says. And then he he brings into this uh, amazing question. I mean, this is a question that is so human. This is a question that reflects the reality of who Moses was and who the people of God is. And he says, how long will it be? So the, the concept of, of just asking and, and placing God on who he is, and, and he uses the terminology of Lord. He says, relent, Lord. In other words, when you bring wisdom into your heart, the resolution for 2020 needs to be the understanding that when we understand who he is, we understand who we are. And and he describes God as the God who is begging, who is pleading, who is coming with the understanding to him, understanding saying that you are Lord, you are the one single God in a culture, speaking of Moses' culture, and you know, when this word, when these resolutions were presented of polytheism, they're coming from Egypt, 400 years of slavery, 400 years of a multiplicity of God and goddesses and all this, worldviews that they are challenged and transformed by the worldview that Moses introduces through the law. And one of the first commandments is exactly that you shall have no other gods before me. So he's using the language to remind the people of God that if 2020 for us is going to be a year of the resolutions of God being presented, given, exercised in our context, we have to understand that there is a uniqueness in the God that we worship. And the uniqueness is that we can appeal, we can um, come with the understanding of who he is and and use the language of relenting. So he says, relent, Lord. And then then he, he, he brings this question that says, how long will it be? In other words, the lordship of God, the, the, the godness of God, the sovereignty of God, I believe Moses is contextualizing to the understanding that you are beyond time 
we are not. And this is why I'm asking the question, how long will it be? Because as, as a person, Moses is speaking and us understanding what the resolution is of having God as God instead of us trying to run the show. He's using the language of time because unavoidably, even as I introduce the podcast, is I'll remind you the concept of resolution is at the beginning of the year, which implies it's at the beginning of the understanding that how we are so limited by time because we are not God. Because we need uh, to ask the question, how long would it be? Right? In other words, in the time frame, how long are you going to allow us to see the mercy? And then he says the compassion, have compassion on your servants and again this is the language which implies again this concept of compassion this concept of as we're going to read in just a second uh, the opposite of compassion the judgment and the wrath of god uh, how long will you continue to do this would you would you turn would you help us to understand the, uh, the, the 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 meaning of this compassion because again this is this this is what moses i believe is going to represent on the concept of compassion Compassion, I see it uh, dissected and presented on verse 14. On verse 14, he says, satisfy us in the morning. Again, using the language of the limitation of a morning or an evening of a day and night is the language to convey to us, to remind us, you are Lord, you are beyond time, we are not. So would you come down and remind us how limited we are and how those limitations remind us who we are in this life, in this world. So he says, satisfy us in the morning. And then the satisfaction the satisfaction that God is going to, or Moses is begging for, is the unfailing love. The unfailing love of God. Uh, just, just listen to the language because um, uh, Dr. Bob Utley in his um, freebiblecommentary.org, he presents the article when it comes to this language of the unfailing love. And, and what is it that Moses is asking? What is it that Moses is praying? And what is it that Moses sees as the satisfaction? So, so translate what I'm about to read, which is the quote from Free Bible Commentary from Dr. Bob Utley. Um, the, the definition that he's going to give of the a satisfied life versus unsatisfied. In other words, a life that finds wholeness, fullness in God is, is in the description of this unfailing love that Dr. Bob describes this as the God's no, no strings attached covenant loyalty. I'm going to say that again. God's no strings attached covenant loyalty, which implies, and he says on his commentary, that this is exactly the parallel parallel definition in the New Testament of the word agape, which we understand is that unconditional love, which Moses is going to remind us that unconditional love, that God no, God's no strings attached, covenantal loyalty, Moses is going to learn, the people of God are going to learn, and hopefully for us, 2020 is the year when we learn that unconditional love, the agape love, the God who is faithful and loving because of who he is, does not imply, does not translate that this unconditional love implies an unconditional relationship. The best way that God presents his unfailing love that Moses is asking for in verse 14 is when God gives the people of God. When, when, when we receive from God the limitations, the parameters, a relationship that is conditioned. And the condition of the relationship, once again, is understanding that this condition, what it presents, going back to verse 14, this unfailing love, this conditional relationship is that brings the ability to sing for joy and be glad all of our days. And I'm bringing this up to us because typically when we think of conditions, we think of restrictions, we think of limitations, we think, and people today, I mean, you know, atheism will tell you that religion is oppression, religion is, is having this narrow-minded. Well, in reality, Moses is saying the conditional relationship, which is the vehicle to portray, to give the unconditional love of God, this conditions portray, give us, is the tangible manifestation that we have the ability not to have a better day, a better year, a better condition or circumstance. Is the ability that in spite of what the year looks like, in spite of what the circumstances may look like, and hopefully it looks better. Hopefully, you know, healing is on the way, restoration is on the way. Hopefully things get better. Bottom line, Moses is going to say, despite, in spite of what happens, it is the ability to sing for joy and to be glad all of our days. So, so can you imagine a 2020? where we are able to sing for joy. Can you imagine a 2020 when we are able to be glad 
all of our days. I don't know about you, but it's very pleasant when you get around people who are glad. Very, very pleasant when, when we are able to hang out with people that sing for joy versus the opposite of joy, obviously, is the mourning, the grief, is the negativity, is, is to have this mindset of uh, just defeat all the time. So in this case, I, I want to remind us that uh, on verse 15, let me close with this. Verse 15, he says, make us glad. So singing for joy, gladness, he, he, he kind of uh, develops that thought and says, make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us for as many years as you have seen, as we have seen trouble. So look at the parallelism of this and gladness in the context of we have seen the opposite, which is affliction, which is the concept of trouble that we have seen. And again, I don't believe that the trouble and the affliction is, is the result of a God who is punitive, who is you know, looking at us with a magnified glass, trying to find our mistakes, trying to find our, our error or our sin. But I believe the result of those parameters that I told you in the concept of the limitations or the of the conditional relationship that God says the soul that sins will obviously die. So apparently this concept of the affliction and the trouble for us is understanding that in God, because of the unconditional love that gives us a conditional relationship, what it does is that this this affliction and this trouble that we can that we could have probably you know experienced in 2019 we can potentially present be experienced in 2020 is for the purpose of shaping us into the image of God so this is the understanding of the theology the, the biblical view of suffering the understanding that some of the suffering most of the suffering is self-inflicted let's just be honest because we self-infliction uh, self-inflicted pain I believe is a result of thinking that unconditional love is unconditional relationship does not work does not work. Uh, I'm going to say this again. Any marriage, any parenting relationship that treats one another with no boundaries in the name of love, I believe, is a detrimental experience. Is when you know when we don't have boundaries. I think we need protection from self. We need protection so we can have a better relationship among ourselves. So this concept of affliction, this concept of a trouble, again, in the concept of Moses, is the understanding that God loves us so much that He has allow us to see and create the limitations now now let me let me say let me say this very very specific and very clear as as we close um i believe the limitations of the relationship with god is jesus jesus his character his worldview his 33 years in this world because through jesus we are able to see what god approves and what god disapproves in Jesus, in the person of Jesus, is God saying, this is acceptable, this is not acceptable. In Jesus is understanding that the person of God is perceived and experienced in the fullness of love by understanding what the limitations are. So as we think and as we move into this beautiful Tuesday, I want us to think that whatever we're thinking, whatever we're feeling, whatever we're saying, whatever we're processing in life, the issue is not how am I feeling better? How do I go through life with gladness and joy and satisfaction? Nothing wrong with those things. The issue is what is it that made Jesus glad? What is it that satisfied Jesus? What is it that made Jesus sing for joy? And whatever, whatever those items, those issues were, however Jesus processed life and went through in li through life, you know, processing those things, I believe that's what ultimately is going to allow us to be free from affliction, to be free, free from trouble. Not because things are going to be better, but because we'll have the ability to take the brokenness of life, the challenges of life, and use them to develop the character of God, the character of the God that Moses is speaking to in our lives, to become the people of God, to relate to God in a manner that we see the fullness of God in the conditions that we need, the parameters that we're set through the person of Jesus. My name is Vidal. I want to thank you for giving me this time of celebration. May God bless you today.